All right, I've said it a few times now. Next generation of consoles is here. I've already covered capture card recommendations for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X, as well as the capture and streaming apps on the Xbox Series X and S as well. This time we're covering the capture and streaming options on the console through the apps for the PlayStation 5. We'll cover a separate video comparing the two systems for streaming as well and a couple other things. Go check out links in the video description for all the other videos related to this subject. Yeah. This one's going to be big. We're going to be talking about the options that the PlayStation 5 gives you for capturing, for recording clips, screenshots, the replay buffer, which is insane on this system, as well as some codec quirks and live streaming to Twitch and YouTube. First, let's start by checking out the PS5 capture settings by heading over to the settings menu and then captures and broadcasts. Here under captures, you can customize the create buttons actions. You can't fully control it like you can on the Xbox, but they have three different presets here with a standard preset, bringing up the create controls with a single tap and allowing double tap and holding the button to do a screenshot and video actions respectively. And then an easy screenshot and easy video clip modes which allow you to focus on one or the other based on how you want the button to work. You can also change the length of your recent gameplay clip or flashback recording, the same thing as record what just happened on Xbox. However, unlike the Xbox's screen recording, which has a very limited buffer for flashback recording at most three minutes, and that's if you drop your recording down to 720p, the PlayStation 5 can buffer up to an entire hour of gameplay footage, regardless of what resolution you're playing at. And that buffer is always running, identifying when you start and stop games. Even better, the setting of how long that recording duration is simply changes the default behavior of that action. Well, we'll explain more when we get in game. Next, you can change the screenshot format between JPEG, which is default, and PNG. If you just want quick, easy social stairs for your screenshots, leaving it on JPEG is fine. But if you want to preserve quality and detail, I'd recommend that changing that to PNG, which is more lossless. At 4K, you're looking at a size difference of the JPEG being 0.5 to 2 megabytes for a 4K screenshot versus PNG being 5 to 7 megabytes per screenshot. After that, you can change the video file format for your manual video recordings. By default, this is set to 1080p, which allows you to change between most efficient WebM, which is actually using the VP9 codec, interestingly enough, and most compatible MP4, which uses H.264 or AVC as a codec. 4K can only record to the most efficient VP9 mode, unfortunately. WebM is great for sharing to social media or YouTube or whatever, but H.264 via the MP4 option is most likely to work with your video editing software and the like. My video editor of choice, DaVinci Resolve, does not yet support importing WebM's or VP9 codec files, so to edit these, I will have to transcode them to a lossless mezzanine codec such as ProRes or Cineform. Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects do have a plugin, a third-party plugin, for importing WebM, but using them and playing it back and stuff was very slow the last time I tested it. Tango down. Ten seconds. Rings. Reloading. Tango killed. Firing. Rings moving. Hustle up. Dust the The details of the encoding here are where things get weird. As mentioned, you cannot change settings for the flashback buffer at all. So these files will always record to 1080p, 30 FPS at 10 to 11 megabits per second. Yikes. Not bad overall, but a 30 FPS limit? Why? But these are the sacrifices made to keep literally an hour's buffer running at all times so you never miss a sick clip. The manual recording modes where you can change between 1080p and 4K or between WebM and MP4 are also interesting and they may come off as broken if you're trying to do A-B testing as me because 
of a weird setting we'll talk about in a moment. If you set it to 1080p, manual recording will sometimes record to H.264 in an MP4 container, even if you have it set to WebM. Same bitrate as the flashback files, and still only 30 FPS. However, this is actually a user error. As digging further, I was able to get 1080p WebM to record, BP9, 60 FPS, and all of that. It appears if you change this setting while you're already in a game, the setting doesn't change. It's like it's always running the buffer and you can't update that buffer with new settings. And so you have to relaunch your game to use the new settings. So my attempts at recording comparative clips back to back of WebM versus MP4 were all just saving as MP4. Screenshot format can still be changed in game, however. I still take problem with the naming of these formats, though. They're poised as two trade-offs most compatible versus most efficient but this doesn't make sense in practice most compatible files are h264 at 10 to 11 megabits per second as stated at 1080p most efficient webm files at 1080p are vp9 1080p 60 instead of 30 fps as the mp4 files and 16 to 18 megabits per second that is a higher bitrate so while i won't complain about having a higher bitrate option the very naming scheme of most efficient doesn't make any sense and is using a higher bitrate. Super weird. Obviously, the higher bitrate is used for compensating for 60 FPS as well, but to a normal person who sees, okay, do I want more compatible files or more efficient files, you would think the more efficient files would mean that they were smaller and lower bitrate, and that is inherently not the case. If you set the manual recording to 4K, however, it locks you to WebM recording, but it's in glorious 3840 by 2160, you get 60 FPS and a whopping 45 to 48 megabits per second bitrate, which is EPOS approved for this kind of recording. Each manual and flashback recording trigger also saves a low quality JPEG image of the first frame of the clip as the thumbnail. So if you copy everything over to your USB drive and are managing it, you might be thrown off by those little JPEGs. Just delete them. You don't need them. Back to the menus we were originally looking at, going down to trophies lets you enable or disable automatic screenshot and or video recording whenever you unlock a trophy so that it'll save the duration of a trophy clip 15 or 30 seconds, depending on what you set it to, so that you can preserve all of your unlocks for history as well. This will use the same buffer as the flashback recording normal stuff. How about accessing the capture tools while in game? The button left of the touchpad, what used to be the select button back in my day, is the share button. This brings up a little bar to record the last clip with full control over duration, take a screenshot or start manual recording. If you have it set to the default mode that makes that tapping that button open up that menu. You can view the last clip and change capture options here as well. When manually recording, a small timer indicator is shown on your screen, but not in the recording, to show you how long you've recorded. Press the share button again to stop recording. Something to note here is that you can't change the save location of your game footage, but you can copy them to USB drives, just not drives set up as extended storage for PS4 games. But normal flash drives or external hard drives can be plugged in, such as the SanDisk USB-C SSD plugged into the front, and files copied to it. Go to settings, storage, and then select the clips you want to copy, copy to USB. You can do this while also having a USB extended storage drive plugged in for PS4 games as well, which is pretty nice. There's the usual Share Factory Studio app available for free on the PS5 store to edit your videos, which we'll cover in a future episode. There's also a broadcast button on that share bar, and let's talk about that after a word from this video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Nerd or Die's new Showdown stream package. Show your Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook audience the way of the samurai with five color options with an Eastern grunge style. Low frame rate animated scenes and overlay components with customizable widgets will elevate your stream production quality. This one is actually pretty cool and I'm going to be taking a few elements of that to integrate into my stream layouts and video transitions and stuff like that because it's pretty neat. Meets the kind of like uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice kind of stream setup and things like that. It's got a lot of cool overlays, uh, alerts, you've got stinger transitions, you've got a full chat layout box that honestly would probably fit a lot of other themes if you were looking for a more unique you know, chat box as well. And you get full access to the source files if you want to purchase those as well. And this is one of their supercharged themes, meaning it's basically a one-click setup, even in OBS Studio, which is pretty nice. Head on over to eposfox.gg slash nerd or die. Use coupon code eposfox to save 15%. 
Check them out today. Before we get into broadcasting settings, save yourself some time. Configure camera under accessories and settings so that it can detect your face if you're using the PS5 camera. Set up your accounts under users and accounts to log into Twitch or YouTube for streaming. You can go ahead and log into Twitter and things like that if you want to share out your screenshots and stuff as well. Then go back to captures and broadcast settings to configure your stream. You can choose between 1080p60, 1080p30, 720p60, or 720p30, but you have no bitrate options. You can't actually set your bitrate. This leads me to believe that it's just dynamically adjusting based on your bandwidth. When I did a 1080p60 stream, it was using the full six megabits per second that Twitch allows, so that's worth considering. You can also choose whether party chat is included in your stream as well. You can toggle the camera overlay with your webcam. You can choose whether it is small, medium, or large. You can add different masks to it. So you can make it a circle, a pentagon, a square, what have you, or you can chroma key out a green screen, which is nice. You can flip it and you can apply various filters, which I really like. I love the scan lines filter and the toy camera filter. You can adjust brightness, contrast, and opacity of the camera. So you can make it kind of slightly translucent. So your gameplay is still seen behind it. And then you can choose to refocus on your face, which I believe uses the dual cameras and kind of reframes based on keeping your cam your face in the center if the angle is appropriate for it, which is kind of neat. The quality of the camera isn't great, though. You also have overlay settings for chat and activity, activity being view counts and things like that follows, I believe, as well. Uh, this only shows to you on the screen, but not the stream, which is nice. Previously, all of that stuff fed out to the stream as well. You can change the position of the overlay, too. And you can also set up to convert your chat to speech for you to hear in case you don't want to read it. So you can theoretically hide the chat, set up chat to speech, and then it plays back to you without you having to read it, which could be more distracting depending on where your priorities are. When you're in game, there is a broadcast icon on the share menu when you press the share button. Here you can set up all of these settings as well, as well as reposition your camera around the screen to get, you know, where you want it to be. You can choose the stream to YouTube or Twitch. Twitch lets you name your stream, but it does not let you pick your game name, which I found odd and annoying. YouTube, however, lets you give a stream name, a description, tags, and privacy, so you can set it as a private or unlisted stream if you want as well. Have fun streaming. Quality for the stream is pretty good for what it is. It's nothing amazing, but it's a basic, here's 1080p60 at 6 megabits per second, and it looks okay, which is fine. Uh, I wish you had bitrate options. I guess it just dynamically adjusts based on your internet connection, as I said. Seems a little weird. However, given AMD's encoder issues, I think Sony needs to backport some of this to them because they're not doing a terrible job. Although, like I said, everything about the camera is bad, but that's that's another video, I think. I hope. But overall, that's it. That is the capture and streaming options and apps for the PlayStation 5. What you can do without needing a computer or a capture card or anything like that. You can do all of this straight from the console. So you can share up to social media. You can record you can edit with the share factory studio which again we'll be covering in a future video so get subscribed for that and you can stream to twitch or youtube which is pretty cool with a camera and everything like pretty cool stuff imo and so i'm glad i got to check this out and hopefully there will be future updates to it as well and we'll cover them when time allows and when that actually happens hope you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe for more tech education and stream guides i'm your stream professor equals fox and i'll see you in the next one